Hello, everybody. Um, I think the camera is going to cycle up and down for a minute on its lighting. It's trying to adjust to the back lighting versus the front lighting. But um, I want to talk about something real quick. Two things. One, cleanliness. More than one of you remarked that there was dirt in this, in my test pieces. I'll freely admit there was dirt in my test pieces. Reason being, I didn't bother to clean them before I painted. I just painted. They're test pieces. I wasn't trying to get a perfect finish on them. This is my latest test piece. I'm about to polish it. I also realized I have some Tamiya clear paint, and maybe I should try it too. Okay? I know Future on the one test piece, this test piece, I know Future produced the best shine out of the three. I mean, that's mirror like, that's close, and that's not even. The problem is, I have trouble spraying Future with any consistency. So that's why I don't like it. I tend to end up with it pooling when I'm done. What I need to learn how to do is just light coats. But the problem with the light coat is it looks like this. That's the problem. Either I get future too, sh too much or too little. The solution is to dunk the piece in the future and set it on a paper towel. More than one of you suggested I should do that. Okay. Now, the model is in this box and it was promptly put in this box while I was done spraying it. That's one solution. In fact, I, I saw one guy, Boxy Buyer, I think. I'll put a link to him at the bottom of the video if I remember. And I know he will comment because he always comments on my videos. Um, I saw a video of his where he took the Tamiya spray stand or some other spray stand, punched a hole in this lid and put it through the lid. Then he sprays it and he just puts this upside down over the lid as soon as he's done spraying. That will keep all dirt away from your car. And then when you're ready for the next thing, you just take the bottom, take the thing off, hold it, and spray it on this part. And put the lid immediately on it. <coughs> that absolutely will keep all dirt away from your finish. Okay? Now, I'm getting tired of the seesawing of the lighting here. And again, it's because the camera's having a hard time with the front lighting versus the back lighting. I got an LED lamp shining directly in my face here. I'm also getting emails. That's what all that is on the phone. The work's about to start up again. I start work on Monday. Today is Monday. It's Memorial Day. A week from today, I start work. So the emails start up a week ahead of time with everyone like, when are you doing this? When are you teaching that? Um, here's the other thing. Model building. Now, I'm going to try to work while I'm doing this. So we can kind of count this as a rant video. I'm going to do something to this car body that I probably shouldn't, and I'm going to take a sanding stick, and I'm going to move the camera, because that seesawing up and down of bright and dark is driving me nuts. So just putting you guys over here will prevent that. Now, I'm taking the sandy stick, and I've already gone over this model with 12,000 grit sandpaper. So I'm just taking the final end of this and just lightly going over it again. My whole problem here is this. I've got to clean this dust off this thing when I'm done. Okay. And dusting it is going to be a fun part because this is to me a paint. It can't get wet. As soon as to me a paint gets wet, it starts coming undone because water acts as a solvent for to me a paint because it's part acrylic. So I'm going to have fun dusting this, I think. I got a good solution. It's called a vacuum cleaner. I have a Dyson vacuum cleaner, if anyone knows anything about those. Between that <coughs> and a quick spray down of air, I'll probably take care of all the sanding dust. And that's what did in my last model, the last paint job on this, was sanding dust was getting in the grooves for the doors. And then when I paint a coat of paint over it, the dust was preventing it from sticking to the model. Okay? And that really, really impaired the paint job. Okay? But, that's neither here nor there. I'm supposed to be talking about something and I'm not. 
what I'm supposed to be talking about is this. Different types of models require different amounts of work. Like car models, you've got three choices there. Well, really two. Shiny, showroom finish, or beaten to crud, rusted out, rat rods. Okay? Those sorts of things. Now, getting a perfectly good finish on a car model, near impossible. I mean, absolutely near impossible. People do it. I'm not saying this, you can't do it. I'm saying for your first go at it, it is hard. That's why I'm having so much trouble with this. I haven't built a car model since I was probably like 15. And when I was 15, it was rattle cam the body, put the engine together, do a little bit of detail painting on that engine if you felt like it, and rattle cam the interior all the same color. Oh, I don't like dropping things like that. Rattle cam the interior all the same color. And then you were done. Okay, none of this perfection stuff. And I'm being faced with perfection because this is a contest piece. You know, things are a lot different since I was a kid. I mean, that was 30 years ago. So there's your car, body, the car models. Okay. Airplane models, you are worried about the interior somewhat, and the finish is metal in a lot of those, which is pretty similar to a car model, except you can weather it and hide the imperfections. Not only that, getting a metal metallic finish to look real is difficult, almost as difficult as making a shiny car model, okay? But it's a different beast, okay? I know I can do a metal finish on a model, because I've done a couple. All right, armor, that's about the weathering. You want that thing to look like it's been out in the field properly. Because no one, and almost all photos you see of tanks are not showroom fresh. Everything you guys see is already out in the field and being used. So you're about weathering. I get jealous of the armor people sometimes because they'll put their kit together in like four days and then they spend weeks painting. I have spent months painting and very little putting together on this Honda. Very different beast. Okay, ships. I have very little experience with ships. I built like three of them when I was a kid. You get the naval models, there's photo etch detail out the rear and it's tiny and it's painstakingly, numbingly crazy. Okay, I've watched a couple of builds of those recently, and the amount of detail you guys are putting in there with tiny little fiddly parts is astounding. <clears throat> Which leaves us to sci-fi. Dioramas and sci-fi. I build a lot of dioramas. You guys have noticed that. I like building dioramas. It's fun. Okay, sci-fi. I build sci-fi. Now, sci-fi has a lot of differences to it. And it depends what genre you're working in. Because um, if you're going Star Trek, they're all clean and shiny, little or no weathering, but they are lit up. And lighting the Star Trek models is getting easier and easier because the kit manufacturers are starting to make them easier. But back in the day, those old school kits, they are a pain to light. So the challenge with the Star Trek models is lighting. Star Wars, you got a mixture of lighting and armor where you're weathering. If it's a Rebel Alliance, it's weathered. If it's Imperial Empire, it's kind of clean. But there's lighting involved, and some of those old kits are horrible for lighting. Okay, like the AMT Millennium Falcon, which I'm going to be getting back to in about a month from now. It's absolutely horrible for lighting conditions. I mean, just horrible. Oh, don't worry, I'm not going to wipe the snot on the car body. Maybe I'll shine it up some. Okay. But, it's just absolutely horrible for lighting. But it's a clean model when it's done. So Star Wars has a little of everything. Then you get into the anime subjects and no telling what you're going to have on your hands. Gundams, big spaceships, Robotech, um, Macross. 
It's all a wide variety of stuff everywhere. So my take on it, and I know I'm going to get some griping from the armor people and everyone else, is that sci-fi kind of rolls everything in together, except for car bodies, bright, clean, and shiny, okay? Because I've got some sci-fi ships that are basically fighters that are just like aircraft, <clears throat> but nothing in the sci-fi world is bright and shiny like a car model, okay? Now, this thing's got some Gundam qualities to it because it's got tiny little parts with lots of painting, and that's what you do in a Gundam. Now, I'm not saying sci-fi models are superior. They are different. It's just that anything in the world can be thrown at you. And that's one of the reasons why I don't restrict myself to just sci-fi. I will build outside sci-fi, like the car, a plane. I'm going to build a plane pretty soon. I want to build an airplane. <coughs> or email fun. Um, next thing I'm going to build is most likely a tank. Okay? Because I got a tank I'm eyeing, and I'm hoping I can finish this in time, put that tank in the contest. Just to let you guys know, I've got a figure I want to do some painting on. I've got some diorama on work on. I got to get back to my rusting experiments, all that stuff. Okay, I'm not again. I'm not trying to sing out one group is better than the others. I'm just saying, with sci-fi, you get a little bit of everything. Okay, and you will notice the sci-fi people tend to specialize, like. There's people to build only Star Trek. There's people to build only Star Wars. There's people to build only uh, Gundams. And there's a reason for it. A lot of you only build armor. You, It's called experience. After your fifth or sixth tank, you get a feel for it. And you just start improving and improving and improving. Okay? After your fifth or sixth car, you get a feel for it. And they just come out beautiful. All right? It's called experience. And if you keep hopping from genre to genre to genre... You're not gaining that experience in that one field, but you are gaining experience. When I'm done with this car, if I pull out like the Black Tiger model I did a review on for a little while ago from Star Blazers or Space Battleship Yamato, if I pull that out, it will have a beautiful fin shiny finish just like the car because I'm gaining the experience on how to do it. So that's why I'm jumping from model genre to model genre. So I can gain experience and learn how to do different things. This is my third paint job on this car. Okay? I have learned from the first two, and I'm using that as an experience here. And I'm not ashamed to say this, that this is my third paint job, because, in fact, I'm happy I stripped the paint, because look at the door handle. There's a lot more detail there than there was before. Stripping the paint was the right choice. I'm getting all the detail back that the thick coat of primer had hidden. Okay? So this was a wonderful choice to do. And I've got the time to finish it. I'm about to put on another red coat to get this evened out. Now that I've smoothed it and kind of taken all the lumps out. I'm also going to put on my Optivisor and take a good look around the surface of the body and look for imperfections and clean them up. Once that's done, this gets another coat of paint. I think I could probably use a damp rag to wipe this with. I don't want to. I'm just going to vacuum it off with a Dyson. And then I'm going to hit it with some air before I paint it. And then as soon as it's done painting, it goes right in that box. Okay? And I'm, I didn't hit the hood with the polishing stick. So I'm going to hit that next. And again, as soon as I'm done with the paint, it goes right back in that box to sit and cure up. And this thing is such a high grit, grit on this polishing stick. I'm not doing anything but knocking the dust off the top layer of the finish. So it's not hurting anything. I should be able to put the first gloss coat down on this car tonight. And I'll be back on track to having it finished pretty quickly after that. It won't take much time. So I'm going to quit ranting here. We can take this as a rant. I'm going to post this as a rant video, not a Honda video, even though I'm working on the Honda while I do it. Mainly because, well, it was a rant. I'm ranting about different model genres and the experience required to work effectively in each genre. And I like to jump the boat. So I'm building a car. I want to build a tank next. Okay. I want to experience things in life. I don't want to get locked in one groove. In fact, my wife was commenting the other day 
we were eating dinner at a Japanese restaurant, and she asked me, have you ever had that before? And I'm like, no. Did you know what it was? No. I just grabbed something and ordered it. I do that quite often. Don't know what it is. It comes out, I'm going to see. It's called experiencing life. Okay? You don't get bored if you jump around and see different things and do different things. Okay? And that's why I will never have a timeshare vacation home. I want to go someplace new every time I'm on vacation. Just, I want to see the world. I want to see different things. It's just the way I am. Well, anyhow, everyone, this video is long enough. I got to get to work. The camera's about to die. It's got four minutes of battery time left. So, let me get busy. I got a lot to do today. All right, bye.